Have you ever stared at a bucket of freshly harvested blooms and asked yourself, okay, what do I do next? How do these colors go together? For some people, it might feel very intuitive on how to marry colors together, but for many others, it is actually a struggle. And that's why I wanna introduce you the concept of color theory and the color wheel as a tool to help guide people who might struggle in this area. In this video, we're gonna go over some of the fundamentals of color theory to help you better understand the theory behind colors and how certain colors can do well together despite seeming like that they would never mix well together. And then we're gonna get into some examples because this past winter, I was able to hydroponically force around 30 varieties of tulips. So I made straight bunches of tulips for my flower subscription members and I was able to use a lot of what I learned from color theory in order to make really appealing and fun bouquets. Believe it or not, it was actually Sir Isaac Newton who established color theory when he invented the color wheel in 1666. He then went on to categorize colors into three distinct categories. So first we have primary colors, which most of us have learned in elementary school. That's red, yellow, blue. And these are the fundamental building blocks of all other colors. He had a second group called secondary colors, which were mixes of primary colors. So for example, red and blue makes purple. The third category is tertiary or media colors, and these are mixes of primary and secondary colors. These combinations provide a greater range of hues giving us a lot more options. So hues are really just defined as the attribute of color that distinguishes it as red, blue, green, or any other specific color on the color wheel. And it is these three categories that build a foundation for the color wheel. So if you've never heard of the color wheel, here is the wheel up here. And designers, artists, people who are in the creative world, they often use this color wheel to reference when they are trying to marry colors together. So on this color wheel, we have a wide range of colors and sometimes we wouldn't think about pairing certain colors together, but we're gonna talk soon about why certain colors can actually work really well together and use the color wheel to guide us. One thing that flowers really have an advantage of over other types of products is the amount of colors and variations of colors that flowers come in. Imagine a world where flowers grew in shades of gray, white, and black. They wouldn't be very exciting, would they? So I think what attracts someone to a bouquet of flowers is not necessarily their scent or the physicality of how certain varieties look, but it is color. And if you think about it, one day I might be in a certain mood where I want a more warm palette. And another day I might just want something that's a little bit more cool, feeling more tranquil and want something more calming. So I'll want a different kind of palette. There's palettes for different kinds of occasions. So think about wedding events. Usually people like to steer closer to the pastel type of palettes. When we're doing funeral work or sympathy work, obviously you're not going to look for a riot of punchy colors. So colors do a lot to convey intentionality in terms of the mood that you are trying to set. So keep all of that in mind as we start talking a little bit more about colors. I do have a little bit more around color theory fundamentals on my Patreon post. So you can find the link below that is gated content for $5 a month as a thank you for me to making content. And in exchange, I make content that is complimentary to YouTube videos like this. But now the fun part, let's actually go through some visual examples and I'll show you how I used the color wheel to incorporate principles of color theory. Let's start off first with complementary colors. These are colors that are opposite of each other on the color wheel. So for example, yellow and purple, red and green, blue and orange. The reason why this color combination works is because it creates a highly contrast and dynamic type of palette. It is very energizing. So color palette like this would do really well at a farmer's market where you're trying to grab the attention of people who are passing by. You wouldn't necessarily want to use muted colors because that would not be very attention grabbing. So the example I have over here is a week where I had yellow and purple tulips come in at the same time. And I thought this would be a great way for me to make a contrasting bouquet that felt very energizing. Now the week before I actually had a more uh, monochromatic 
bouquet, which we'll talk about later. So what I like to do for my CSA customers is actually switch it up. So not just switching up the colors, but also switching up the feel and the energy behind the bouquets. The next category we have are analogous colors. And this is a really good visual that shows you what that means on the color wheel. So analogous colors are adjacent to each other and they basically create harmony and cohesiveness between the colors in a bouquet. So let me show you a couple of examples. This first example was actually one of my earliest bouquets. I had some triumphs come in. So I had an orange that was paired with a beautiful variety that was pink yellow peach so that variety is called tom Puss, named after the dutch dessert that looks very similar in color and this is th this just intuitively works really well together but again the theory behind it is that the colors are all adjacent to each other on the color wheel and it's really hard not to look at this bouquet and just feel happy and light which is really what tones of pink, orange, and yellow are meant to convey from an emotional standpoint. Now, the other image over here is an interesting one because it highlights the versatility of tulips. Certain varieties will have multiple colors within one. So Tom Poos being one of them, this tulip variety is called Lambada. And you can see that there are hues of orange that turn to peach that turn to yellow. So essentially all three analogous colors in one tulip. You could do a straight bunch of this and it would look really dynamic. You could do a straight bunch of a more monochromatic type of tulips. So just say like a straight bunch of red tulips, it could still be impactful in a different way. I'm just saying that if you grow certain varieties that have multiple colors in them, you don't necessarily need to think about mixing them with other tulip colors because they already can achieve so much on their own. One more in this category is the classic pink and purple combination. So in this case, I had some purple come in as well as pink. You can't really tell here, but there's actually a burgundy double tulip in here. And what I think it does is if you just had the purple tulips on their own, it would feel very moody and a little bit more what we call emo, but that pink in there really helps soften that and brighten it up a bit so that it's a little bit less moody. The really cool thing about this bouquet though, was that when the pink fringes opened up, this is a variety called Louvre. When it opened up, it actually revealed this like indigo violet center. So it was complementing off of the purple fringe, which I thought was really cool. And that's the other thing about these tulip bouquets, which I often hear people lamenting about, hey, it's really hard for me to compete with grocery store bouquets. Think about the types of varieties you're growing, the evolution of color within these tulips and how that can actually be an experience, which is a value add that no grocery bouquet is going to be able to achieve. And I'm actually gonna talk a little bit more about that in the next category. In this next category, we have monochromatic colors. And I think this one is intuitive for anyone who understands the word monochromatic, meaning the same color. So monochromatic colors are basically using shades of the same color. So in this case, we have two varieties that are pretty well known. This one is apricot parrot, which I think a lot of people grow. Uh, the one that is a little bit harder to distinguish is a variety called Sunrise Dynasty. That's, uh, that's the one to the top left. So this one here just looks very cohesive together. It's just very peachy and it's, and it turns a little bit more pink, but they all turn pink together, which is really cool. Now, this next example I think is really, really cool. So it's hard to tell, but there's actually two varieties of tulips in here. There's Columbus, which is a classic that a lot of people know, but then there's also another variety called Verona Sunrise. Now, when they both start out, I've picked these pretty early. So they're like at a perfect stage for picking, especially if you wanna store them, they're still not fully saturated. So they look very similar in terms of pink. When the customer receives this, so let's say in the form of a flower subscription or a retail bouquet, 
they're seeing this as a very monochromatic look. But over time, the tulips are actually going to evolve. The Columbus is going to get a lot more saturated in pink, and the Verona Sunrise is actually going to show hints of peach and turn a little bit more yellow. They're gonna look like completely two different tulips, which means that when they open up, they're actually going to have analogous colors. So again, this is the other value add where a customer can get a $20 bunch of tulips from you. It, it's going to look like one vibe for the first couple of days. And when it opens up, it's going to have a completely different vibe. And I think this is where people really, really love locally grown tulips because we're able to source super cool varieties that can do things like this. And it offers them this really cool and wild experience that they would never have even thought flowers could bring. So just something for you to think about in terms of what other flowers can do something like this? And is this something that I can proactively message to my customers to tell them, hey, like you're gonna have a really cool experience throughout the next few days as these colors evolve. The last category that we have are triadic colors. Now, triadic colors are schemes that involve three colors that are evenly spaced around the color wheel. And what does what this does is it creates a balanced and vibrant palette. So an example here, there's a little bit of cheating because I don't have green tulips, but orange, purple, and green are really good example of a triadic palette. And you can see here that this is super, super punchy. I mean, this reminds me of Sorbet. This is a color palette that I personally love a lot. And to me, it conveys more summer than spring because it is just so punchy. Now, if you were to take just purple and orange, you could also achieve an analogous palette, but I do want to emphasize that the role of foliage can play a pretty big role when it comes to uh, bouquet making and thinking about how we can pair colors together. Another example is this over here. Now, not true triadic color pairing, but you can see that I've got yellow and red, which are evenly spaced around the color wheel. And of course, blue doesn't really exist in the tulip world, but we do have purple. So this over here is again, very punchy. It's not actually color palette that I was proactively going to make, but I had just a bunch of random stems come in uh, post Valentine's day. And what I did was I did an experiment. So I made these bouquets and I also did the classic purple and pink bouquets. And I thought people were going to tend to choose the purple and pink bouquets. A lot of them actually chose these bouquets. So it really is a testament to the fact that color is super subjective and it's also super subjective based off of the mood that you're feeling that day. And I guess what I'm trying to say is that even if you feel like that colors are potentially clashing or it's not your color vibe, it doesn't mean that it may not be someone else's color vibe. So the last color I wanna talk about is white. White is technically not a color, but of course, we have it a lot in flowers. And I would be remiss to say that even though it's not on the color wheel, it's like the most versatile color. I feel like white typically compare with anything. Some of my favorite bouquets this winter season were with white. So I paired white with Columbus. And in some of those bouquets, I had some pastel oranges and they looked amazing. But generally, I find that whenever I have white, I can really make any bouquet work because white just pairs so well with most of the other colors. So this was a really quick and fun video for me. I hope it was informative for you. I would love to hear from you. Do you struggle with making bouquets because of trying to figure out what color combinations work together or is it intuitive for you? And are there any other color combinations that you personally really love? What are the flowers that you have to make those color combinations work? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video.